So you're a company driver, thinking about going lease. Too scared, not sure what to do to jump over to that side. We're gonna get into it today in this topic, man. Porting here live from the terminal, Springfield, Missouri Prime. There you go, man. Let's talk about this. There you go. There you go. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. When they talk about me, they say I be tripping. Yeah. What they say about me doesn't make me mad. No, no. I think they hate me they see me. All right, all right, all right. Uh. Get myself situated here. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, O'Shawn Parks here. For another edition of y'all know I normally call it home cooking man but um I'm not home as you can see I'm reporting uh doing this recording from my the cab of my truck so I'm OTR for right now I'm over the road right now I'm in Springfield Missouri at the uh prime terminal uh picking up another student so yeah that's what I'm that's what I'm doing so this is from from the truck but uh what I'm gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and get into to the topic today, um, and our topic today is how to make uh, the transition from being a company driver to a lease driver. Uh, so I got a lot of questions on that over a couple of weeks from a few of the drivers out here on the road that want to know, you know, how do I make the transition from being a company driver to a lease driver? How do I be successful? In doing that what do I need to look for um, you know just what is my suggestions on it and and things of that nature a lot of people what I've come to find out are scared to make that transition they think that it's a big jump um, you know they, they, they're, they're scared of failing um, there's nothing to be afraid of um, let me tell you something if you are scared to succeed or scared to fail you will never excuse me let me try this again if you're scared to fail you'll never know what success feels like okay a lot of people that are successful in businesses or just successful in life in general you know they went through their fail points you know what i mean so they've been down they've been out and they know what fail feels like so when they get to success it's a it's a beautiful thing so do not be afraid to fail whenever you you know you're making that transition. It's probably it, it matter of fact, I'm not gonna say it probably it will happen. You're not gonna just jump over from being a company driver going to lease um, and think that you're just gonna jump into it being really, really successful. Um, you're gonna have some down times, you're gonna hit some bumps. Just like right now, I think this is a, a nationwide thing, but freight is really down right now across the board everywhere man it's it's really slow right now rates are really 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 have dropped off so these are the times that you have to preserve your money uh, be real cautious with your fueling and stuff of that nature which we're gonna get in all that uh, today in the video uh, for you for you people that are company drivers that want to make the transition over the lease and want to know all about it so this is what I say to open it up is a couple of things you want to take into factor or to think about before you do make that transition from company to lease. Um, one thing is once you do come over to to, to leasing, you are uh, leasing your own vehicle or excuse me, leasing your own truck, uh, like everything falls on you, okay? From the company aspect, you wasn't responsible for your fuel you just pretty much had to watch your fuel mileage and you know if you kept your fuel low and you you got a, a certain miles per gallon a week you would you would receive a, a bonus or an incentive for keeping your fuel low okay i know i know at prime for the company drivers if they hit like nine miles to the gallon they get a uh, six extra cents per mile bonus um you know it's, it's pretty big 
to your company driver, you know, I, I'm, I don't know what they make on the company side as far as cents per mile, but I know it's anywhere between 38 cents to 42 cents. Uh, so if you grab that extra six cents, you know, doing nine miles per, per gallon, it's a big jump. Um, I know a lot of them preach slow, 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 do 55 miles an hour, stuff like that to get your uh, MPGs up. So when you come over to the lease side, man, you don't have that incentive anymore. Okay, that incentive is out the window. Um, you pay for all of your fuel. Okay, over there in the company side, you don't pay for your fuel. And pretty much they tell you where to fuel at, how much to put in. Um, yeah, so pretty much what you're doing is you're running under somebody else's fuel, basically Rob Lowe or whoever you pull for, whatever entity or major company or company you pull for, and your company driver, they're paying for the fuel. So yes, they're definitely gonna watch over you for that. Uh, when you're a lease driver, you pay for all of your fuel all of your fuel so you pretty much become the Rob Lowe um, you 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 control your fuel your MPGs everything like that you don't have nobody holding your hand and babysitting you so that is something very important that's why I opened that up with the first one uh, is feeling you are in control of your fuel okay at that point so basically what you gotta do is you have to shop around for fuel pricing and find out the best place for you to go. A lot of people still use the macro, um, I think it's 27, 26, to find good fueling uh, points for them still as if they, you know, what they what they teach you to be a company driver. Me, personally, I don't use that. Um, to me, because it's it's a way for, for Prime, you know, because they're all in a network here, okay? These fueling companies, or fueling stations, TAs, pilots, petrols, is all in um, like a contract. Definitely, if we don't have a lot of trucks that's going there to fuel, you know, the fuel pricing is gonna go up. So what I say, what I do is I, I go on the Qualcomm and I look for a fuel station along the route um, and find the best fuel pricing. Um, which that all comes with, with pre-planning your trip knowing where you're going what parts of the country you're going in uh, planning in advance so that you you don't run into the situation of not knowing where to get fuel at in bad fuel pricing in bad states so make sure that you do know that that's something that you have to know when you're over here on the lease side too you know is what states are good fuel states what states are bad fuel states uh, which states have high tax fuel uh, or high fuel tax in which states you know have low fuel tax um, and you can find all that out uh, actually like I was saying that macro 27 it factors all of that in it factors the fuel tax in but at the same time it does factor in um, where prime does have a contract or or needs to be sending more trucks to in order to get this fuel pricing so you know that is a big factor. Doesn't necessarily mean that that's, <clears throat> excuse me, doesn't necessarily mean that that's the cheapest place to go. Uh, it just, you know, they, they throw you there because they need to pick their, pick their numbers up there. So as a lease driver, you always want to check to know um, where the best fuel pricing is for you. Fuel, fuel, fuel pricing, fuel, fuel, fuel pricing. I can't repeat it enough because that will be the breaking point for you uh, coming from company driver to a lease driver that will break you the most is your fuel Okay, fuel is Solely in your control So the better that you plan your fuel along your route the more money you're gonna put in your pocket. Okay, so Fuel 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 keep that keep that running through your head and You'll do great with your fueling. All right. Another thing is a lot of company drivers they come over they're so used to seeing you know that they make 38 cents or like i said between 38 42 cents a mile and then they get over to the lease side and they get their their, their first load dispatched to them and they see this this mileage but then never mind the mileage they see that it's paying them two thousand dollars okay they don't even break down they don't even break down any of this the math they don't break down damn they paying me two thousand dollars to go 1500 miles the 1500 miles just went 
completely out the window. Okay, didn't pay no attention to the mileage. All they saw was ching ching, the dollar signs. Listen, don't pay attention to the dollar signs, man. That is the most deceiving thing that you can can do. And, and money does do that. It'll deceive the hell out of you and you will be tricked and you will be quick to say, yep, I'll take that load. That's 2,000, woo -hoo, I'm about to get some money. But are you really getting money? Okay. If you're going 1,500 miles and it's paying you $2,000, okay, first of all, if you're a solo driver, okay, I'm not even gonna get into paper logs because more than likely you're on electronic logs, especially most of the people that view this video are on electronic, on e-logs. And the ones that run paper logs, man, I don't have to explain any of this to them, really. You already know how to do it. But most of the time, if you're on e-logs, man, 15, uh, 1,500 miles, man, it's gonna take you uh, roughly about two and a half days, okay? So that means that you're sitting on a load that's paying you $2,000 to go 1,500 miles and you do the math. Is it worth it? Um, is that is that really worth really worth sitting on that load two and a half days uh, to make two thousand dollars? Best thing to do is man, put your mileage, put your mileage in. Say the dollar amount is two thousand dollars. This how this how you find out for the company drivers how much you're making per mile okay strictly for the company drivers at least drivers and owner ops and everybody you guys should already know this but you put in the dollar amount and divide it by the mileage okay so two thousand dollars divided by fifteen hundred and it comes up with how much you make per mile okay now in another video in a couple of weeks I'm gonna tell you guys about fuel surcharge um, here at prime you're not getting hundred percent fuel surcharge so automatically you're going to come out of your settlement and have to pay for fuel so make sure that you watch that but like i said that's another video down the line so what you want to do uh, when you come over here is don't look at the dollar amount look at dividing the miles by the dollar amount see if it's a good um a good rate for you me personally um everybody's different depends on what rates you like with the rates being down and low right now what you need to do is hopefully with you being a company driver you 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 know where where freight is at and the bad thing about being a company driver is that you don't know you may know where freight is coming out of but you don't know rates so <laughs> that's another thing that, that that i was telling you you're going to take a down a downfall on because when you're a company driver you don't know that how much these these places are paying you may know that freight comes out of there because when you was a company driver you was pulling a lot of freight out of there but it could have been cheap freight so you don't know really what the price is on this freight until you actually are out there being a lease driver and you see what these companies are really paying so that's that that's the area you're going to want to pay close attention to is knowing what places pay to come out of and then you're also going to want to know what places don't pay to go into and don't settle for going there um but then sometimes you're gonna have weeks where you're gonna have to go into an area where it's paying great to go in, it pays crap to come out of there, but guess what? You're gonna have to take that crap and you're gonna have to eat that, hopefully for it to get you into a better location, okay? Yeah, you're not gonna make a lot of profit off of that load. They may be paying you a dollar a mile on it. That dollar, you're gonna have to use that as your fuel to get the hell out of there. Because if you sit around and you reject, you reject, you reject, and you're gonna be sitting there, what you're, what you're doing is, you're not, what you're not understanding is that that's that rate in that area, man. If you're looking for a two dollar in that area, and they keep on sending you stuff that says a dollar, a dollar fifteen, a dollar twenty, and you like, man, hell no, reject. I'm waiting for two dollars. You will be sitting there waiting for a long damn time because that is pretty much the rate in that area. So what you gotta do is you gotta grab one and get the hell out of there. Go to a better rate area. Get a better late. Uh, get better freight. You but you gotta get the hell out of there. Okay, you can't keep sitting there rejecting and saying, I'm not moving. I'm not moving for nothing less than $2. That area you're in, it paid great for you to come in there. That's why you took the load probably initially in the first place. So you got paid great coming in there. So it's like a tick for tech. You got paid great going in. You got to know you're going to get shit coming out. Excuse my French. Like I said, 
my videos, people, sorry, sometimes, you know, it's the best way to explain it. But you got paid great going in, but you're gonna get paid nothing coming out. You gotta take that nothing coming out as your fuel to get you out of there, to get to where you can become profitable. Don't sit around and keep rejecting that load or you're not making money, okay? Get that load, use it for your fuel money to get you out of there. Very key important. Very important key to being successful in leasing, business, whatever. Everything is basically like a trade. All right, I trade you this. I give you 250 to go here in this area, but in 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 return, you're not gonna get nothing real great back. So you know it's a trade line, okay? It's a trade line. So I'm gonna give you something good, but you gotta know that in return for this good going, you're gonna get something bad coming back, okay? So that it gives a balance, okay? So you gotta take the balance with it. Um, some, sometimes if you know how to, you know, if you excuse me. Prime is not a is not a uh, is not a choice board, so you can't go on the board like some of these other companies and say, "I right, I want this 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 this." I can plan out my week. I don't work that way. Okay, um, pretty much, even on the lease side of the things, you're still to me. I feel like this. Even on the lease side of things, you're still a um, you're a company driver. You just get paid more, and all the responsibility falls on you because it's not forced dispatch. But you don't have a load board where you can go on and, and say where you want to go. You just can keep rejecting and rejecting and rejecting. They just they keep picking out stuff and throwing it to you. But you can't go on a board and say, hey, I want to go here. So be really cautious, man, with with rejecting loads when you come from company to be unleashed, man. Because you know everybody does want to make that two fifty a mile, three dollars a mile. But sometimes, man, if they paid you great going into that place, man, you got to kind of know. If you, especially if you've been doing your homework and you know it's a bad area that it's gonna pay crap coming out, man. So you gotta take the good with the bad, do that. I spoke before on advances, man. Try to stay away from advances, man, unless you absolutely need it. Um, I know sometimes uh, with some companies, you may need to get fuel and you gotta take the advance to get the fuel. Oh, excuse me, let me adjust my camera real quick, guys. All right, there we go. And you got to take the advance to get fuel. I can dig that, but you're not going to have that that situation at uh, at Prime because pretty much they they front you your fuel and everything off that Com Data card. So that's not even an issue. That's for another video that I get into with you guys later on. Um, before for you making the transition from company to lease, do not be scared to fail. You're pretty much doing the exact same job that you're doing now as a company driver. Just that you're over on the lease side, you're responsible now for a truck note that you didn't have, okay? You're responsible for fuel, you're responsible for your Qualcomm, you're responsible for repairs, you're responsible for your tires, you're responsible for everything, okay? Everything with that truck, you're responsible for, all right? It's not a hard thing. They take it out of your settlements in, in increments. They, they're just not gonna just swipe at one time and leave you with nothing, with no paycheck. They take it out in small portions. So it's not nothing that you can't handle. If you do have to go to the shop, if you do have to get tires, you know, you have a tire fund as well that you're building the whole time. So, you know, that helps out a whole lot. Um, but it's nothing that you can't handle. If you're coming from the company side, man, you already know how to do the job, okay? The hardest part is you, you already got out the way. You know how to drive the truck. You know how to get to where you're going now you just got to put on your business cap and start thinking business okay you can't just be dumping all kind of fuel in your truck because at the end of the day it comes out of your settlement you also got to know what days to put fuel in your truck which if you look down in my videos below these ones i explained this already uh how to, how to do your fueling so you know check out those videos if you want to know about the feeling and how I do feel, and I do very well with feeling. I do about, I don't know, 1,300, 1,400 a week in fuel, which that's pretty standard. So uh, if anybody tells you that's high, man, that's standard. They're probably lying to you. But when you make that transition, man, over from company to lease, man, it's not hard. Just put on your business cap, man. 
um, watch your numbers, crunch your numbers, stack up money, stack back money. Like I said in another video, um, the video before this one, I explained to you guys how to put money into your LLC and pay yourself as an employee. Watch that video, great information in there. I know I did ramble early in that video about the group that I'm part of ATS, but I had to give a shout out to my people first. So, you know, that's out the way. But it's not hard, don't be scared uh, to jump out there and do it. Like I said, you're not gonna jump into it and be really successful off Jump Street. But once you start learning your lanes, you start learning who's, who pays and who doesn't, you start learning where to go, where not to go. Now, that's, that's the biggest part of it, learning your freight lanes. Um, because as a company driver, you don't learn that really. You don't learn freight lanes really. You just learn where freight is at. But you don't know if that freight is worth anything because regardless of what the price is of it you still get paid the same amount to go you know per mile but now you're in a different world when you go to leasing because now you're getting percentage you're getting settlement amounts from what prime gets and then you get the 72 cut off and now it's not so much of i do i get this guaranteed amount you're not guaranteed all the time so you you know your your miles your miles um your rate changes by the load you know you're not guaranteed that same amount like as if you're a company driver but man it's not hard and get out there go do it if you think about doing it do it um basically to do the same job that you're doing a lease driver gets paid double okay some some weeks uh it, it, it could be a company driver does better than a lease driver but for the most part at the end of the day a lease driver is always going to do in the long run a lease driver is going to do better he's going to make more uh you have the freedom of home of going home when you want to go uh you know what i mean you have the freedom of if you're dis you don't like your dispatching your dispatch not getting along you have the freedom of firing your dispatch and getting a different one so excuse me so it's a whole lot of perks to it but at the same time if you are are not business savvy and you are not paying attention out here and you're not doing things the proper way um you will fail man there, there's there's guys out here that went leasing and they're in the hole you know what i mean they're in the hole weekly so basically and they've been in the hole weekly for months so basically what you're doing is you're working for free working for free and the reason why you're working for free somewhere along the line something disconnected Okay, so you gotta you gotta make sure that you don't get into that disconnection, man. Keep your business business savvy when you're doing this lease thing, man, and you'll be successful, man. That's 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 how I've been successful with mine, and I'm passing it all down down to you guys. Uh, I'm not gonna keep rambling on this video, but my next video I'm gonna do is uh, basically like a part two to this. It's gonna be making a transition from a lease driver to an independent contractor, okay? It's a little bit different, okay? A little bit of a difference um, in, in, in going from a lease driver to an independent contractor, okay? Uh, lease drivers are independent contractors somewhat, but when you when I say you go independent contract, that means when you go into like the Landstars, the Mercers, the Eagles, the, the, the Roll Runners, the, uh, the companies where you're using their authority, but you gotta do everything else, okay? We'll give you the authority, we'll give you the cargo insurance on the trailer, you gotta rent the trailer from us, but now when it comes down to this fuel tax, you gotta do your fuel tax numbers, you gotta hire your tax person, uh, you know, you gotta do all that. You know, here at Prime, they, they, they offer that services, so pretty much everything that can just come out of your settlement, you don't have to worry about that, you just get behind the wheel and drive. But when you start getting into that IC out there with, like like I said, the other the companies where you're just using their authority, man, it's, it's another ballpark, man. You, now, you, now you start dealing with more numbers and, 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 and running your business really, really even harder, all right? So, like I said, man, I'm reporting here live, man, from Springfield, Missouri. I'll be here next week. Uh, again next weekend because they're having a company picnic man and they're having a truck show so my truck will be in the truck show um, 
just for y'all that don't know, it's the beast. The beast, the LSU beast will be in the show, man. I plan on taking first place, man. Anybody who feels differently, man, show up, show out. Uh, we're gonna have a great time, man. Next weekend, man, here in Springfield for Labor Day weekend. I'll be here. So if y'all see me out there, man, come by, talk to me, man. Give me suggestions on the video, man. If you see me out on the, on the highways, byways, man, blow your horn. You see me at a rest area, you see me at a truck stop, come talk to me, man. Let's chop it up, man. Let me know anything y'all want me to talk about. Let me know if there's anything I could change in videos, man. I will. I'm an open-minded person, man. I take constru uh, constructive criticism very well, man. Just don't come at me with no negative constructive criticism. You know, you gotta, you gotta know the difference, man, between the two. It's constructive criticism where it's positivity at the same time. I just don't deal with the negativity. You know, you're not gonna walk up on me and say, yeah, I don't like your videos. That's not gonna hurt my feelings. You don't like my videos? Guess what? As simple as this. It costs you nothing. Pay me no mind. <laughs> that real talk, man. It costs you nothing. Pay me no mind. You don't like my videos, man? Don't watch them. You don't like the information I got? Don't listen to it. Okay? But the information that I got is good information. I don't make jambalaya videos out here just talking about a bunch of nothing. I speak truth. I speak real knowledge stuff. If you play this back, play my videos back, you'll learn stuff. You'll make money, man. That's real talk. So, man, with that being said, man, I'm done, man. I'm about to... Do some work on my truck, man. I guess I need to do some more light fixtures for this truck show. So, man, till next week, man. I'll catch y'all later, man. Y'all know me, O'Shawn Parks, On Point Trucking Concepts, Facebook page, man. I'm out, man. Signing out. Deuce. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. When they talk about me, they say I be trippin'. Yeah. What they say about me doesn't make me mad.